All right, so we are working with, uh, this month, uh, a book called The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity by wonderful Edwin Gaines. She is one of the New Thought prosperity divas, and, uh, and this book is really, really wonderful. Of course, it is in our bookstore. The chapter we're going to talk about today is forgiveness, but when we talk about forgiveness, this is really forgiveness in regards to building and expanding our consciousness of prosperity and abundance. I know forgiveness is one of those topics that we think, oh God, is he going to beat this drum again? But you know, forgiveness is maintenance, and it took me a long time to get that on the spiritual path. Forgiveness is not something that we do once, because how many of us have tried to forgive one time, and it comes back again and again and again, and you say, I thought I forgave, I thought I forgave, I really meant it when I said it, I thought I forgave. So here's what I see is that, you know, when we cut someone out because of what they have done, you know, initially, initially that feels good in that moment, you know, because people sometimes are a problem. Have you noticed that? You know, that sometimes we just want to say, it's their fault. Yeah, it's their fault, or they did it to me. And like I said, that feels good for a moment. That feels good at first, but it doesn't bring lasting peace or happiness. You know, holding the grudge blocks the ability to have peace of mind. Holding the grudge blocks the ability to prosper the way the universe wants us to prosper. Hmm? So unwillingness to forgive, Edwin says like this, and I thought this was great. I'd never heard it quite like this. She said, if we are unwilling to forgive, that's like stabbing yourself with a knife, expecting the other person to feel the pain and bleed. You know, I mean, how crazy is that? You know, so forgiveness is not something we do for the other person. Please hear this, okay? This is not about letting other people off the hook and condoning their bad behavior. That is not this talk. That is not what we teach. What this is about is you taking the hook that is in you, that is irritating you, getting the hook out of you so that you can be free so that you can live a more abundant, joyful, peaceful life. So again, it is not something you are doing for the other person. In most cases, we all understand the other person has boldly gone on about their business, and they are living their life and having a fabulous time, and they don't even know that you are miserable, waiting for them to notice how miserable they have made you. Right? They don't even know. They are just boldly living their life thriving, prospering, happy as can be, and you're waiting for them to realize it's all their fault, that you are not happy, joyous, prosperous, healthy, and free. Boy, that's a lot of power to give someone, isn't it? That is an enormous amount of personal power that we give to someone else. Now look, I'll be the first to say this is the hardest practice in the New Testament. This is why Jesus says when you forgive, you have to forgive 70 times 7. So think back, back then, 2,000 years ago plus, people did not have a little calculator on their iPhone. Yeah, they didn't. iPhones were very primitive back then, you know? So 70 times 7 was just an infinite number to people. Just keep forgiving is what he was saying. Forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive, and at some point you're going to feel better. So we're not doing it for the other person. You know, it's for us to be free, peaceful, happy, and prosperous. Forgiveness is like housekeeping. You know, you can't just do it before company comes. Otherwise, it's overwhelming, right? You have to do it on an ongoing basis. In fact, even a daily basis, right? Because it lets us make room for the good that we desire. Here's how it works. Every time we successfully forgive, and what do I mean by successful? is you have no energy on the experience or the people at all anymore. Oh yeah, that was then, this is now, I don't have any energy on that. That's where we want to get. <sighs> Every time we successfully forgive something, that makes room in us for the universe to bring in some new good. Right? But that good cannot come in as long as we are in unforgiveness, because that unforgiveness takes up space in our heart, in our consciousness. Now, ultimately, there is really no progress on the spiritual path without forgiveness. Oh, 
God. I hate that sometimes. I really do. It's like, can I do something else? Can I just say like 100,000 affirmations? Can I do treatments? Can I read six or seven more books? Can't I do something else? Do I really? But you know, the answer is very clear. We will not progress spiritually without forgiveness. It's like we're saying to the universe, you know what? This not forgiving feels so good in me. It is just so juicy. I'm getting so much out of it that I will wait for my good. I will wait for my healing. I will wait for my abundance and prosperity. I will wait for greater love in my life because I want to hang out in this icky dark place some more. Have we ever really felt like that? No, of course not. But that's kind of like what we're saying to the universe when we don't let go. See, Unforgiveness, the unforgiving part that we cling to, you know, I would say that's, um, it's like, you know, the blame or the shame or the regret, guilt, hurt, resentment. Ah, oh, boy. Doing this, we cannot feel truly worthy. If I'm resentful, if I'm blaming, if I'm grudging, I will not feel worthy of having the best that God has in store for me. Hmm? Jesus taught forgiveness. He was the master teacher. Love one another, forgive. Love one another, forgive. Love one another, forgive. And I know people hear that and they think, doesn't he have anything else? Isn't there anything else? There's got to be another way. But you know, 2,000 plus years and we still don't want to forgive. You know, because, and this is why the practice of forgiveness is essential and why it's so difficult. We all have a good story about how our case is special and we shouldn't have to forgive because you know what this person did to me is so despicable, so awful, so unforgivable, I will just continue on with it. But again, who that hurts is that hurts you, that hurts me, it does not hurt that other person. So I think, okay, 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave us this teaching and we still don't want to forgive. We're just so invested in they are to blame. It's their fault. But who we have to forgive pretty much is everybody. Everybody, everybody, and especially them, everybody. You know, this includes now, work with me here, all of our exes, you know, all of them, go back <laughs> to high school, okay? <laughs> go way back, yep, think of them, those people you did or did not go to the prom with, and on and on and on. First marriage, second marriage, third marriage, four, just go on and on, okay? <laughs> Parents, bosses, our children, world leaders. Ah, oh my God, the opportunity is endless, isn't it? No, really, the opportunity to forgive is tremendous. You know, we have to learn to forgive fully and freely and joyfully and completely every day. It's a great thing to do before you go to bed at night. Just say, anybody I need to forgive? How about me? Oh, yes, I'm always on the list, but we'll get to that. You know, we, I think we have a problem with people when they don't behave the way we want them to behave. And I don't know about you, but I have a huge expectation for how I think people should behave. And every day, I have to let that expectation go. Because the truth is, I want to be the person who frees people to be who they are. I don't want to say, how do you do? Nice to meet me. Nice to meet you, nice to meet me. Let me heave my expectation on top of you. You know, nobody really likes that. It doesn't feel good. So when people don't behave the way we want them to behave, that's a problem for us. And the answer is simple. Just accept it. Accept it, accept it, accept it. Love them the way they are. Just love them the way they are. But we want to not stand in judgment of others. What do we do instead? We bless them. So, you know, recently I, um, I had taught this abundance workshop and we used a wonderful book by Catherine Ponder. And she said that what we have to say when we bless other people is I bless you with a rich increase of God's almighty substance. I love that. I have it on a little card uh, on my visor in my car. And this is what I've been doing now rather than having an opinion about other people when I'm driving. And I want you to know... <laughs> I have, in the past, had enormous opinion, <laughs> especially when I'm driving. Now, I'll say, in, in, in fairness and honesty, I think I'm pretty good at home. You know, at home, I'm meditating, I'm praying, I'm reading. I am the space of unconditional love and peace in the universe. The problem is I get in my car. 
and, and then I'm out in the world with people, and all that peace seems to evaporate very quickly. So what I'm doing now is I bless you with a rich increase of God's almighty substance. I bless you with a rich increase of God's almighty substance. Now, part of why I like that is what I'm wishing and praying and affirming for other people. I'm telling the universe I'm willing to experience that myself. So that rich increase of God's almighty substance isn't just for them. It comes back to us as well. You know, so much I realize after seems like a lifetime, pretty much most of my life, on the spiritual path, so much is just not my business. Yeah, I used to think it was all my business, and now I think almost none of it's my business. I don't need to have or voice an opinion about most of it. I'll just leave it at that. About most of it, I don't need to say anything. Um, so in the science of mind, what we encourage people to do is to work on our stuff and let other people work on their stuff. Imagine that. Huh? Wow, what an incredible idea. I'll work on my stuff, and you work on your stuff, and all will be well. But I, I understand that blame is a cultural norm, you know? Uh, but I think a better question, rather than who did this, you know, whose fault is this? Who can we hang the blame on? Better to ask, how can we fix this? And I think that's true on every level. How can I fix this? How can I be the consciousness that knows what to do to make this better? See, because with forgiveness, we can always let go of the past, you know, and, and turn to the more important issues in our life. Because see, I think unforgiveness, often we use that as like a delay tactic. I don't have to deal with the other big stuff that's pressing in my life because I'm going to hang out in this place of unforgiveness and I'm going to keep telling that story, you know, the they done me wrong song. Emma Curtis Hopkins says that daily what we have to say is I forgive everyone and everything. I forgive everyone and everything. So whether you remember it or not, you want to forgive it. And of course, there's plenty that we do remember, isn't there? There's plenty of stuff we do remember. Tell the truth. You remember that incident in the third grade, don't you? Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, we, sometimes we are just not as good about letting go of it as we'd like to be. So in your prayer time, I think a, some great things to ask is, who am I blaming? No, really. Who am I blaming at this point in my life? What am I blaming them for? Why am I blaming them? Who has hurt me? Why did I allow it? What do I need to forgive in me? All right, let's talk about parents. Anything there? Just do it. Forgive. Government? Anything there? Just do it. Forgive. The world? Anything there? Just do it. Forgive. And here's where it gets ugly. Who have I hurt? Yeah, either intentionally or unintentionally. Who have I hurt? And why? And in what ways do I punish myself or other people? You know, the truth is that nobody can hurt us unless we allow it. Jesus gives this teaching in the Bible, in the New Testament, of course, about how we get so caught up seeing the speck in someone else's eye that we forget about the beam that's in ours. In other words, he's talking about staying on your side of the fence. You know, that if you see a flaw in the other person, it's your vision. It's your vision that needs the correcting. Why am I not seeing this person as the way God sees them? And the way God sees them is perfect, whole, complete, and evolving, just like every one of us. You know, I think, and this is how it all makes sense to me, is that our soul chose it all to go through all of it. Not just the good stuff, not just the wonderful stuff, not just the stuff that's comforting and uplifting, but also the difficult things that we've experienced. On some level, I think our soul chose that. Why? Because it all contributes to our growth. It all adds. Catherine Ponder also said, the world we live in is an exact measure of our thoughts. Now think about that. The world I live in, my life, my world is an exact measure of my thoughts. And if that's so for me, that absolutely is so for you. So if you don't like the world you live in, well, that means that you don't like your thoughts. And Ernest gives us the admonition to change your thinking 
and you will change your life. Now, I know there are people that are particularly difficult to forgive. But remember, you're taking the hook out of you. You're saying, this that I have experienced in relationship with you no longer has any power over me. You have no dominion over me. I give you no authority over my life, my happiness, my peace of mind, my joy, my expansion. You don't have that place in my life. And sometimes it's really hard to begin. So you say, I forgive you, you person, you. I forgive you, you farm animal. I forgive you, you initials, blah, 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 right? But the point is to start, right? You start where you are. You know, if you feel like you hit a wall and you're not making any progress, you say, God, I really want to forgive this person, but I seem to be having difficulty. Forgive them through me. I know that you, infinite mind of God, know how to forgive. Forgive this person through me. And I think something that we say again and again and again to ourselves a million times a day is, I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. Every time that person or incident comes into our mind, I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. Yes, it can be difficult. That's why not everybody's doing it. Yes, it's difficult. That's part of why we're in the shape we're in, personally and globally. It requires our best effort. That's all we have to do. Just the best you can do on any given day. This is how this is relevant to our abundant prosperity consciousness. The Bible says it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I think that's everything that would add to our life in a loving, healthy, expansive, prosperous, joyful way. God wants us to have whatever it is that will make our life be fulfilled. Yes? A lot of people, I've learned through the Abundance Workshop, carry an awful lot of debt. And forgiveness is one of the ways to get out of debt, to really go after where do I need to forgive, who do I need to forgive. You know, because again, everything is energy. And unforgiveness is trapped energy. It's congealed energy. You know, and energy has got to flow. It's got to move. So if you carry debt, forgiveness is one of the greatest things you can do to get yourself out of debt. Do it daily. Affirm forgiveness. Affirm forgiveness. Ask yourself before you go to sleep at night, who have I put out of my heart today? No, really. Who was I not my best spiritual, conscious, loving, evolved self with? How could I have done that better? And in your heart and in your mind, ask them to forgive you and forgive yourself. Yes, forgive yourself. Part of it, part of it, maybe the bottom line, is that all forgiveness is ultimately self-forgiveness because it all takes place in here. All forgiveness is self-forgiveness because it takes place within us, within our heart, within our mind, within our consciousness. I think God has a great life in store for all of us. And one of the ways we get to experience that life, one of the ways we really step into it and embrace it is to forgive, forgive, forgive. Let's pray. So we, thank you. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment to remember that right here where we are, God is. We are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving presence. God's Holy Spirit is right here. It's the truth about us. So in this awareness of our connection with God, the infinite mind, I also know we're all connected with each other on the unseen side of life, that there is only one and we are all it. So in this awareness of our connection with God and with each other, I speak the word today that we are more willing to forgive and be in forgiveness than we have ever been thus far. I know that no one has done anything to us that touches that deepest place within us, that all of this that needs to be forgiven is out here, external, on the world of effects, the world of form. But I know spirit that we are is unharmed by any of it. And so I claim for us that we let go and release that which needs to be let go of and released in our life today. We are more willing, more receptive, and more able. Because the truth is we're more conscious right now than we have ever been. And so if there's somebody in particular that you know you need to forgive, see them in your mind's eye now. 
and see yourself taking the hook out of you and allowing yourself to be free. And so we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold dear. And we remember that God is right where they are, that God's presence surrounds and fills and heals and uplifts everyone. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world so that wherever there needs to be more light and more love, we let our prayer be that very light and love in the world. We let it be all needs met. We let it be healing. We let it be peace of mind and reconciliation. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that our lives are prospered as we forgive and forgive and forgive again. And so with a grateful heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.